In this final video of Lesson 5, Level 3, we're going to finish up our order form. In order to do that, however, we're going to need to learn how to work with the match function. On our order form, the next formula that we need to create is the one in cell F17 that calculates our order discount. The size of the order in this cell needs to be compared to the top row of our discounts table over here on our discount page. Note that I've already named this range of cells discounts. It looks like an HLOOKUP function will work, so since we've already worked with those, I'll just whip one together here. Equals HLOOKUP. I need to look up this value in the discounts table. The discount amount was in the second row, so I'll put a 2 here. And finally, this was an approximate lookup, so a true goes here. Enter. I see that this value is a positive number, and since this amount should be subtracted from the total later on, I need to make this a negative number, so all I need to do is put in a negative sign here at the beginning, and that finishes that cell. The last difficult thing that we need to do is to calculate the shipping costs for an order. Like we had back in level 2, we'll need to create an index function. The shipping costs will be calculated from the tables back here on our shipping sheet. We have four different shipping schedules, Standard, Preferred, Most Preferred, and Uber Preferred. I've already named them Shipping 1, Shipping 2, Shipping 3, and Shipping 4. Looking at each of these tables, it looks like the shipping costs are determined by the combination of the region number, 1 through 5, and the shipping method of either truck, rail, air, or boat. The region number is determined by the distance from our warehouse and can be found on our states table here in this column. Alabama is in the southeast region, and that region is 2, so it's not too far from our warehouse. Hawaii is probably pretty far, so it's in region 5. I guess this all makes sense. I've already named the range of cells here for the states in columns B, C, and D as states. Notice that I didn't include column A in my table. Why, you ask? If you look back on our order form, the customer state will be input here as a two-character state abbreviation, right? In order to use the VLOOKUP function on this table of state region data, I remember that the VLOOKUP function will only look up values in the leftmost column of a table, so that means that I'm going to exclude column A, and that puts our abbreviation data in the leftmost column. For the columns in our shipping tables, truck is cheap, Rail is a bit more expensive, air is really expensive, and if boat is even available, it's the cheapest. Notice the difference from before, however. We previously had the numbers 1 through 4 here, but now we have these four text-based shipping methods. So our former way of doing this, where we just had a 1, 2, 3, or 4 automatically give us the column numbers, that's not going to work any longer. We'll have to learn a new function for how to convert this. Let's start with our index function. Like in the last video, I've created a sandbox over here to the right, and I'll use that in order to assemble my individual pieces and get them working before I assemble them into one massive index function. For the first parameter of our index function, we'll need to list out the names of our reference tables. I've already named them, but I'll go back over here to my shipping tab to remind myself of what I named them since my memory isn't what it could be anymore. I'll highlight these cells here in the first table. Please, please, please notice that I'm not including the row or column headers in the cells referenced by my table. This function will not work if I accidentally do that, and that's a very common error for most students. I see that the table is called Shipping 1. Just an FYI, you can also see all of the named cells and cell ranges by going up to the Formulas tab and then checking out the Name Manager here in the Define Names section. This box will allow us to view, add, or delete any ranges that we want to use on our spreadsheet. Here I can also see that the other tables are named Shipping 2, Shipping 3, and Shipping 4, so I'll just list them here separated by commas for later convenience. For the second parameter of our index function, we need the row number. If we look over to our shipping sheet, 
we see that the region numbers of 1 through 5 just happen to exactly coincide with our row numbers 1 through 5 over here in our table. Better to be lucky than good, I always say. Since they're exactly the same, we can take a shortcut and just use a VLOOKUP function to determine our region number, which will also conveniently give us our row number. We can't always count on this, but since they happened this way this time, I'll take advantage of it nonetheless. Equals VLOOKUP. Our lookup value is the two character state up here in our input form. Our table array is the group of cells in our states table. Cool. It looks like I've already named this range of cells as states. It looks like the region number is in my third column of this range, so I need a 3 here, and I need an exact lookup, so false is always the choice here. For the third parameter of our index function, we need to come up with a column number. It looks like our column numbers of 1 through 4 no longer have the numbers 1 through 4 in them, but rather the words truck, rail, air, and boat. Back on our input form, the user is allowed to type in any of those four words, and we need a way to convert this user text input and then determine which column number, 1 through 4, that corresponds to each one of those so our index function can interpret that text into it as the column number. Enter the dreaded match function. If I go over to the shipping sheet and start out the match function here, equals match, it tells us it returns the relative position of an item in an array that matches a specified value in a specified order. The first parameter that it needs, a lookup value, for demonstration purposes that can be this cell here that contains the text truck. Now a comma. The next parameter needed is the lookup array. I need an array of values that this function can use to figure out which column number the word truck corresponds to. This range of cells in any of these tables will work since they all contain the same values, so I'll highlight these cells here. The next optional parameter of match type allows us to find the largest value, less or equal to the lookup value, the exact value, or the smallest value that's greater than or equal to the lookup value. For this course, we'll always want the exact value, so a zero will always work for us. We get a one here, so now that works. If I put a boat in all small letters here, we get a 4, so that shows that this function is not case sensitive. Note that this function is pretty easily messed up by putting in a value other than any of these choices in our array. If we try to deliver the shipment by giving it to my dog Fido, the match function returns an NA error. Now that we've figured out one way to use our match function, let's get back to work. Going back to our orders page, let's build our match function here to give us a column number. Equals match. Our lookup value is this cell up here in the order entry page. Our lookup array is back on the shipping table here in these four cells. And we can just put in a zero here for our exact lookup. In my input cell, I'll put in a rail here just to make sure that it works. Two. Cool. For our fourth and last index function parameter, we hopefully remember that the purpose of this parameter is to tell this function which of these four shipping rate lookup tables we want to use. Regular, preferred, most preferred, or uber preferred. In our previous column parameter match function, we had this handy group of cells to refer to in our match function, but unless we want to just type in these four table names somewhere on a hidden page or somewhere in our workbook, we're kind of stuck. Or are we? We can use Excel to create our own little array right in line inside our match function. Let's check this handy trick out. Equals match. We want to look up whatever this cell contains. For our lookup array, we start the array out with the curly bracket that's located above the enter key on my keyboard. Then for my four values, I'll type in all four of the values that a user may type into this cell, making sure that I wrap each one in double quotes.
finally finish it off with a zero again and close out my parentheses. Now I'll test it out with a regular. That gives me a one. Put in an uber preferred and I get a four, so all is well. Now that I have all the pieces of my formula constructed for our shipping cost index function, let's put them all together. Equals, index, parentheses. Next we need our reference tables. We need to put them in parentheses, so I'll put in another one here, followed by shipping one, shipping two, shipping three, and shipping four. For my row number, I'll click on this cell. For my column number, I'll click on this cell. Finally, for my area number, I'll click on this cell, and let's see if it all works. While we are still using all of these intermediate functions over here in my sandbox, let's test it out since all of our parameters are easily viewable in this bite size approach. Looking into my states table, Georgia is in region 2, so if I put in a GA in here, that should give me a 2 for my row number. Putting in air for my shipping method gives me a 3 for my column number, and it does. Finally, putting in uber preferred here gives me a 4 for my area number. Looking at the second row and the third column of my uber preferred shipping table gives me a value of $1.61, so that checks out. If I turn on my trace precedent arrows, I see that my formula still references all of these cells in my sandbox, so we need to get rid of these references like we did in the previous video so that these arrows disappear. Let me go into our row number VLOOKUP function and copy it from our formula bar, hit escape, then go into our index function and paste it into our row number parameter. Now let me repeat that for the column number match function. and finally repeat that for our area number match function. Hit enter and pray that we still get the same answer. We do, so let's erase my arrows and recreate them to see if any of the cells in my sandbox are still being used. None of these sandbox cells have arrows pointing to them, so that means that my formula is no longer using any of them, so I can clean up this sheet by erasing all of my sandbox cells over here. We now have our shipping cost per pound successfully calculated. The last item we need to accurately calculate our total shipping costs is to multiply this new awesome formula by the number of pounds being shipped on the order. We don't have that calculated anywhere, so I'll add that to this cell here in F16. Equals, sum, all these weights here, close my parentheses, and we now have the number of pounds here in this cell. Going back to our shipping cost cell F18, I just need to multiply this awesome piece of work by our new total shipping weight cell, and that cell is now complete. Whew! We can finish up this lesson by adding in a sum formula that adds up all these order summary cells here. There we go, and there you go. That's it for lesson five. We learned a lot this chapter, but you've done a great job, so we'll see you in lesson six. Go Knowles!